www.irf.net and inshallah most of these answers are there hope right. answers the question okay. so so basically it refers to two different things that's right excellent okay and 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 the word uh, where it's uh, the, you're saying there are two different words yeah one is day in arabic and the no, other one has got two meanings okay. one meaning is 24 hours day there is the epoch or a and, period and is this the word yom has been used in both the uh, same 100% same same word has yes. been used to refer to a day which all the is three verses which you have quoted surah hajj also surah marj also including when allah says they have created the earth and the heaven in six days the same yom is used but the plural is ayam same in surah fusilat chapter number 41 you might have forgotten the reference verse number 9 to 12 the same ayam is used right so it, and and that word can mean a day and or or it can mean a period but here it only means a period an epoch Right, and 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 a period can uh, can be any period can be one hour, can be ten hours, can be ten years, one thousand years, one million years, one billion years. And and the two things are actually referring to two different things, so that's it right. can be excellent. Hope Thank you. Hope Thank you're you. convinced. I am. I'm going uh, at the back for my next turn. Thank you. Thank you, brother Rahul. We await your turn as you come back again. The next question from brother. If there are non-Muslims present here who would like to ask questions, rest assured. We value your doubts and we give full respect for them. You have full right to object. Have a crossfire with Dr. Zakir. We would thank you for it. If you raise questions to put Dr. Zakir in the dock, as they say, it becomes a more interesting session for everyone here to understand that's a pressing problem rather than have less pressing issues brought before. If there is no other the non-Muslim brother? Yes, Brother Rahul. Yeah. Uh, yes. Brother Rahul, that's interesting to see you running all over and some people not coming up. Yes, Brother Rahul. Right, okay. The next question which I have in mind is that uh, you said yesterday, you quoted a line that uh, one of the commandments was said, you shall not make any resemblance of anything that is in the heaven above or in, on earth or in the water beneath. Because I, your Lord, your God, is a jealous God. Now, um, do you do you really think that? Don't I mean? Don't you feel that it's a bit petty for God to think uh, jealously or be jealous of the, these things? I thought in my mind that these feelings are limited only to human beings, because and God, I mean, egoism and jealousy. I don't think are things which which can be attributed. A very good question, and I agree with you totally. Why should God be jealous? That is what is mentioned in the Bible. So I'm not saying, yeah. I didn't read the Bible. Okay. Neither do I agree that everything in the Bible is the word of God. Okay, but we, do believe, but we do believe that uh, we should not associate anything to God. That's right. right? So that part, so why, why does that verse, God get annoyed? Brother, yeah, if okay. you ask a question, please, after finishing sorry, the question, sorry. let me give a reply. Yeah. Sorry. If there is a debate, we can have a debate, no problem. Yeah. Fine? Yeah, no, no, no. Please, the different thing. This is the question answer time. Okay, you ask a question, wait for the reply. If I reply and we keep on interjecting, not that I don't mind, but that becomes an individual dialogue which you can do some other time. No, I'm sorry. Fine? You ask a question, you ask a second question, I give you time. But then if we keep on talking, it will be like a, yeah, I, I understand, like a debate yeah. which you can do. There also, even in debate, we have time. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. You pose a very good question that I quoted a verse. That saying that thou shall not have any given image of anything in the heaven above, in the earth beneath, and water beneath the earth. Thou shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, thy Lord, thy God, is a jealous God. It was a quotation from the book of Exodus, from the Old Testament, chapter number 20, verse number 3 to 5, and the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 5, verse number 7 to 9. So this is a quotation of the Bible. I don't consider the Bible completed with the word of God. So the first part of that verse I agree is correct. Because God cannot have images. But the second part that God is jealous, I don't agree with that. That particular portion. So that's the reason that you have to ask to the Christian, not to me. I'm not here to support everything of the Bible. What matches with the Quran, I will support. What doesn't match, I will not support. Therefore, I do agree with you that it is unlike God to be jealous on that thing. Hope that answers the question. But we do, we do say that we should not associate anything to God. Yeah, and God, this is a biggest sin which will never be forgiven. Yeah, so that we, was clarified yesterday, brother. That was clarified yesterday that associating partners is the biggest sin. Thank you, brother. 
Are there any non-Muslim than any of the mics? This question is by a Hindu. Uh, his name is given here is P. Naidu. He says, Muslims are bliss to mankind. What about non-Muslims who by birth are not Muslims? What stage of life do they understand Islam? Sister posed the question that, according to a Hindu, the Muslims are a blessing to humanity, alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah. But a non-Muslim is not a Muslim by birth. So at what stage of life do they understand Islam? Before I answer the question, I would like to make a point very clear. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that every child is born in Deen al-Fitr. Deen al-Fitr means innate religion. Every child is born as a Muslim. Later on, he's influenced by his parents, by his elders, by his teachers. He starts doing idol worship, fire worship, and then he becomes a non-Muslim. Therefore, according to Islam, every child is born as a Muslim. That means he submits his will to God. Later on, by external influence, he may become a non-Muslim. Therefore, when a non-Muslim becomes a Muslim, convert is not the appropriate word. Convert means going from one track to the other track, or going from one faith to the other faith. The right appropriate word is revert. Revert means originally he was a Muslim, he becomes a non-Muslim, then comes back to Islam. So the right word is revert. So every human being is born sinless, he is born as a Muslim, later on he goes to the wrong track. Now coming to your question, those who become non-Muslim, not that they are born non-Muslim, everyone is born as a Muslim, those who become non-Muslim by the influence of the parents etc., at what stage do they get the message? Different people get the message at different stage. Like a person who is born as a Muslim, if he is born in a Muslim family, he may get the message from day one. He may be born in a Muslim family, but he may not be practicing Islam, so he may get later. Some may get day one, some may get after one year, some two years, some five years, some ten years, whatever it is, Allah wala. Some people are born in a non-Muslim family, they grow up, they may get the message in childhood, maybe in school, they may get in college. Whatever it is, different people get at different times. But irrespective whether a Muslim gives him a message or not, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Sanuri him ayati na fil afaqi, wafi anfus him, hatta yatabayyana nao annorha. That soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. So irrespective of whether he gets the message from the Muslims or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the message directly by showing his signs in the furthest in the horizon until it is clear to the human being. I may give a message, the non-Muslim may not understand. When Allah gives the message, he sees to it that the message is clear to the non-Muslim until he realizes that this is the truth, this is the haq. Later on, after he gets the haq, he may agree, he may not agree for his ulterior reasons, for his ulterior motives, for his personal reasons. Now, before he dies, inshallah, Allah will give the message. Now, when, which year, Allah knows best. But before he dies, so on the day of judgment, therefore the Quran says that those who reject the faith, they will never complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I didn't get the message, why are you putting me in hell? They'll only say that please forgive us. We are at fault. Because they know that they had got the message. But they did not accept it. They'll only say to Allah that please give us one more chance, Allah will say it's too late. So, Allah will surely give them the message before they die. Hope that answers the question. Yes, brother. I am Mahesh. It was an eloquent and uh, scintillating talk today also. My question is, in the Holy Quran, there is a surah uh, by Prophet Muhammad, Dahaba al-Zama. He says, the thirst is gone. After breaking the fast, he says, thirst is gone and veins are flowing with blood. Can you throw light on that? What the brother, mashallah, has requested the translation of the dua, which we break our fast with. And I appreciate the brother that, mashallah, is coming and he is trying to understand the region of peace, the region of truth. And again, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa to give him hidayah. The brother asked that, what does it mean, the dua, when we break the fast? that when we break the fast, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the thirst is gone and the veins have been vanquished. That before we break the fast, we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we are breaking the fast, we are praying that the thirst is gone and we are having the food and the water and are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we were able to complete the fast and now the time of breaking the fast is there 
and now our thirst is going to be vanquished and our hunger is going to be vanquished.